good. So uh, I sprayed out the inside of the block with Glyptol and rather than take all the time of of uh, taping up and plugging up all the holes because there's not that much overspray gets in them uh, but there's a certain amount that will get down into the into the uh, lifter guides and also into the uh, into the valve guides so a little oil on a wire brush and just run it back and forth and it polishes them all right out cleans them up and it also accomplishes another thing it pours a little bit of lubrication on it we're going to use a two wrench uh, lifter that seems to be real popular with everybody. Put a little thin coat of oil on them and just drop them down in place. Make sure that they they're free, that there's no burrs, that you got a good ream on it. Uh, if you take it to a machine shop, I'd probably just take my lifters with him and let him just ream them to size and fit them and make sure that he's all happy with them. Yeah, you got a little burr there. Hey, or something. On this rebuild, we are replacing the lifters, but maybe your engine doesn't need lifters in it and maybe you don't have tools that you're able to go and uh, measure those bores uh, so one old timer told me if you just put your finger over the hole and if you pull it up and it pops you got a good okay you got good clearance on it if it doesn't pop at you I've got them oiled up. If they were dry, they'd pop even louder because they'd pull them out of there quicker. But, uh, you know, you can rock them back and forth. There's just a few thousands clearance on lifters, so you shouldn't get a whole lot of slop on them. And maybe you don't need to replace them, but uh, an old-time way of telling whether they were bad or not is just pull up on them. And if they don't make a, make a pop, then they're probably beyond tolerances. You can read it with a small... Uh, small set of calipers and then they do make uh, pin sets but uh, most of us uh, probably don't have a set of those around okay but anyhow so we've lubed up we cleaned up all of our valve guides got all the grit from grind from uh, reaming them out of the way lubed them up lubed up our lifters and everything is is free uh, with oil on them uh, just the weight of the lifter should let it sink down to the, to the to the bottom and that's what we've got going on here okay so we've got a good fit on them uh, we're going to reinstall our cam we already pre-lubed our bearings from earlier and now we'll go ahead and just put the cam in and this will be this will be the last time this cam will be out of here I hope I hope I hope Yeah, you know, line line the holes up where you know where they are, and then of course they're down here on the side of the block. So kind of get them lined up, get the rear cam bearing in, and it takes an alignment tool. And a 9 16 inch wrench, which is right here. And so I'm going to find our hole. And remember, I built up the front one so it would grab hold of that bearing and not let it move around. And some people per sealer on those think that it's going to leak a little oil out through them. I haven't ever found that to be the case, but you know, suit yourself. You want to put a little dab of Permatex or something like that, silicone or something. You could go ahead and seal it up. It doesn't doesn't take a gasket. Never had a gasket from Ford.
and get the center one in here yeah I got it and just run them down snug they don't do anything but go for the ride with the rest of the engine and there's our there's our cam installed and it spins with still just a little bit of drag but it'll open up here right directly but I can basically turn it with one finger and that's that's happy and like I said before I built that reaming tool and some of them you couldn't you couldn't barely turn you know and you'd run them in with a drill and about the time they got free it was because you burned up that rear bearing and kind of opened it up so that alignment tool is real handy so we're uh, ready to <coughs> Uh, install our crankshaft after we finish up our transmission work we've got the crank out of here and uh, <coughs> flywheels mounted to it and we're happy with how all that run out went with the flywheel the main shaft and uh, hooked up to the crankshaft scat crank is uh, static is is balanced from scat uh, but our flywheel, who knows what it is, and we'll build up our flywheel with our magnets and put that all together and, and get it to where we're happy on magnet height and it's mounted. And then I'll static balance that uh, crankshaft uh, on, on, on the little balance, static balancer thing that we've got and drill holes and drill in it and do whatever it takes to get it into balance and then it'll be installed and the crank will be there and we'll be ready for the rods and the pistons in it and mm -hmm. we're gonna build the rest of the transmission and we're done so if you say that real quick it doesn't take long <laughs>